So Roller started laughing at Biggie Face, you know, joking at Biggie Face. And Sky decided to join in on the fun at Biggie's expense. Bitch, is you shitting me? What's going on, my girls and my gays and my straight boys and my baddies? It is me, the baddest one of all, the Godfather. And I'm back with another review for you guys. Y'all, before we jump into this negativity, let's start off with some positivity. I want to say thank y'all for all the love you guys have been showing these reviews. I see it. It does not go unnoticed. I see it. Give yourselves a round of applause. Y'all have blown this channel up, y'all. So keep doing y'all big one. That's all the positivity I got. That's it. That's all I got because these hoes are negative Nancy's. So, y'all, y'all know the drill, right? If you new here, get you a drink. Get you something that got a little alcohol in it. Because in this review, we about to address some, some people. Some people I've been dying to get to. I've been holding out, not trying to go too far in on them. But they have not learned yet. They won't learn. They fake. They fake. <clears throat> Sky. So, be sure to like, be sure to comment, be sure to subscribe to this channel. Click that bell to be notified of all my latest updates because, I mean, it's not a review until I come around. I mean, I'm the only one who really matters. <laughs> but let's get into this fool of fucking nigga tree. All right, y'all. So we start off episode 12 where we left off the last time with everybody essentially begging Smiley to fight Sapphire. Like, they feel like if a bitch telling you they gonna come hit you in your face and... It's up to you whether you square up or not. Like, that shit is sad. They feel like somebody should just go home because they shouldn't feel like they have to beg you to fight somebody. And I feel the same way, Smiley. I don't want you to go home, but the fact they got to beg you to fight Sapphire and Giraffe Ass is saying a lot to me because I feel like if that was Mariah Lynn, you would have stole off of Mariah Lynn's face. You would have hit her dead and I'm out. But since it's Sapphire, you acting all scared. And I don't know why you scared because Sapphire can't even fight, as we saw. So I probably wasn't doing shit. So I smiled at trying to contemplate whether she want to fight or not. And Sapphire just run into her shit. Doom, doom. You oh, ain't shit funny it. though, because it's every day. You're you, you not like, you know. Bro, yeah, bro. I've been there. Bro, you do it every show. day. Y'all, they was hugging for the most part. Like, security jumped in, broke that little shit up. Like, girl, that was much of nothing. That was a hug session, if anything. Sapphire jumped up on the wall trying to get the smile into some. Just let me hit her one more time, one more time. Like, Sapphire, you had a few seconds to prove that you want a spot on this show. And in those few seconds, you've proven to us that you don't, you don't deserve nothing. You don't deserve Suki as a friend. And Suki, why is you trying to jump in the fight? Like, bitch, you was not needed to jump in that fight. You jumping in fights for other people? That wasn't even a fight for one that was a hug session. So I guess you was trying to jump in there and hug it out too. Like, go sit the fuck down. You, you was not needed, Suki. You standing on sisterhood. Remember that. But I want you to keep in mind for the later reviews that Suki said if her friend fight, she fighting with her friend. Keep that phrase in mind. Keep keep, keep what phrase in mind, y'all? All right, now. All right, so after all that died down, we see T and DJ Sky weak ass finally pull up. And I'm like, I love me some T. I miss T. But DJ Sky, why are you here? Like, you're just a road DJ. Like, you really don't need to be here like we don't have no turntables for you at the moment so just go back return the sender so just when i'm thinking the fool of fucking nigga trash died down et extraterrestrial looking ass decide to pull up and say she got a problem with tzatziki now y'all i almost spit my drink out when that girl see if she want to holler at tzatziki i was like what i was like okay okay i was like finally tzatziki got some shit to do because tzatziki been in the background for quite a while now so step step to the light caroline so, E.T. basically had a problem with Tzatziki clowning her on Instagram. I guess Tzatziki was clowning E.T. when her and Krishan was on good terms, you know? Doing what a sister would do. And that's basically what she was telling E.T. But E.T. was like, you know, I feel like I deserve an apology for that. And Tzatziki was like, an apology for what? You know, I don't feel like I should give you an apology, bitch, for doing a sisterly action. I don't think that's deserved. And, you know, E.T. was like, because you was, you know, making fun of me. And so Tzatziki was like, hold this, hold my purse. Girl, girl I was gagged. I was gagged, y'all. I was gagged. I was gagged. But now I'm not gagged no more. Because when Tzatziki was like, hold my bag, everybody jumped in and was like, no, Tzatziki, that's not worth the fight. That's not worth the fight. So now all of a sudden, shit not worth the fight. 
does it be the smallest, stupidest shit? T being sick was deserving of a fight, apparently. But now somebody asking for an apology and they feel like they shouldn't get one. It's not worth a, not worth a fight. Both of them was not deserving of a fight. But y'all let it go down with T. So let it go down with E.T. Was good for the goose, good for the gander, bitch. And then it was house B. So I'm like, okay, either they don't like T or they just pick and choose what they want to do. There's some pick and choose assholes. Because yeah, the fight it wasn't it really wasn't worth the fight. Just an apology because Tasiki, you did make fun of her, so it really wasn't worth the fight. It it wasn't like you know you dropping your bag, trying to hang your bag off to automat. It wasn't worth all of that. But in the same breath, it took me back to that T situation. Like this girl is sick. Like it all y'all jumped on her because her mood wasn't right. You know, I mean, I, I, I don't know. But yeah, long story short, you know. They hugged it out to see could give her a hug. And, you know, everybody else want to jump and be involved with the all the sunshine and rainbows. Everybody want to jump in and give hugs to, you know, but you just want to be included. Just want camera time because they wasn't giving nothing. And I was like, damn, Tzatziki, like, if you wasn't a fighter bitch behind something so petty, if you want to fight behind that, what's your trauma? Like, ooh, you must have had a bad childhood. I was like, hmm, you got some childhood trauma we got to unpack. You do. I can tell. So then T and DJ Sky finally pull up, finally join the rest of the hoes. And it was now time for Anamek and DJ Sky to hash it out. Long story short, Anamek was like, why did you run up on me, bitch? She just kept wanting to know why did DJ Sky run up on her. And if DJ Sky was not willing to give an apology for doing what she did, Anamek said she was going to hit her. Broken finger or not, she was going to attack DJ Sky. Yo, y'all could tell DJ Sky was scary. Like, I could tell she was not on that type of time. Like, I understand how to make wanting an apology because DJ Sky, long story short, you did run up on her for no apparent reason. You did. You really did. But if somebody keep calling me a dumbass bitch, dumbass bitch, dumbass bitch, dumbass bitch, I was starting to think that only a dumbass bitch would apologize because... That's a dumbass bitch move. So I'm like, I don't make you mean you might be right because only a dumbass bitch would have sat there and got called a dumbass bitch, and only a dumbass bitch would have sat there and apologized. So I'm like, mm, maybe I'm make not too far. Maybe I'm make not too far off at all with you, DJ Sky. Maybe she's onto something. But DJ Sky didn't apologize to Anna Mac and they, you know, they hugged it out or whatever. Now all of a sudden, everybody hugging it out. Everybody gonna be ace boom coons all of a sudden. Girl, I was so fucking over it. Like, Tzatziki and E.T. hugged it out. Anamek and DJ Sky hugged it out. Then come Sapphire, giraffe looking ass, hugging out with smiley. So I'm like, why all of a sudden is a, is a hug session? So I'm like, oh, I get it. We got to end these storylines and get, and get into some other shit. So I'm like, all right, well, let's be over at this point. Let's end these storylines. I'm just like, how y'all bitches to hug somebody after y'all just didn't fall them? I'm like, I know it's for the TV, I know it's for the cameras, but damn, like, that's why I be giving a storyline. Because in reality, ain't nobody hugging shit out after they just fought with somebody. Then I seen E.T. go give T a hug. And I was like, yeah, because you was weird as fuck. And yeah, she was deserving of a hug, but I don't think I could hug the bitch. I would have give her, I would have dapped off. I wouldn't have hugged her. I do think E.T. want to <laughs> lick the box. I do. So just when I'm thinking everything has died down, here goes Scream Face, messy ass. Telling Scotty, you know it was an apology to Scotty. You didn't apologize to nobody. And Scotty was like, I don't feel the need to apologize to somebody. So long story short, she was throwing that at Anna Mac. Scotty felt like she didn't need to give Anna Mac an apology. She felt like Anna Mac wasn't deserving of an apology. And I'm like, mm, I don't know, bitch. I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. Scotty was saying Anna Mac was talking shit. That's why she didn't give her an apology. And I'm like, Scotty. I don't really think you made that Anna Mac beat your ass five times. Like, y'all went five rounds and she beat you up look like 50 times. I really think that's why you really made it. You never got your proper lick back yet. But that's on you because you don't want to sit there and kept partying with the girl after she beat your ass that many times. That's that's on you. So that's why she never gave Anna Mac an apology. She said Anna Mac was talking shit. Mind you, both y'all was talking shit. You just happened to get beat up. You talk shit and I beat up. She talked shit and didn't get beat up. So I'm like, I'm low-key over y'all because this happened on episode one. So either fuck and shut up or fight again and shut up. But shut up. So then we got in the Biggie and Rolly situation, y'all. And this is where I kind of paid more attention to because Anna Mac and Scotty really wasn't talking about much or nothing. Like, if they did fight again, I felt like Scotty was going to get her ass whooped. So I was like, I really wasn't paying too much attention to it. 
But the role in Biggie situation, I was like, let me pay a little more attention to this. Let me see what's really going on. Yeah. So Biggie was like, I don't understand what's our problem, Roy. Like, I don't understand what me and you went wrong in. And Roy was like, Biggie, you know what you did. You know what you did. You was going on big old saying stuff about me. And Biggie was still acting. It was like she just was confused on the whole situation. But then, somehow, someway, Stunner Girl got brought up. And I'm like, okay. Because I ain't seen Stunner Girl since episode one. So I'm like, why are we bringing up people who not even here to join the conversation? Stunner Girl don't like none of y'all. She don't like y'all too, especially. So I'm like, why y'all speaking on Stunner Girl? Like, Rolly was saying Biggie was keep messing with Stunner Girl. And she wanted her to let it go. And Biggie wasn't trying to let it go. And I'm like, well, Stunner Girl not even here to defend herself. So I feel like y'all should just eat a Subway sandwich and shut the fuck up. Yup, yup, yup. That's what I feel because, like, the girl not here to give no type of clarity. Give her two cents on the situation. So I'm like... If it's not going to be conversation between y'all two and what y'all two issues really is, because how can you be mad that she picking mess with another bitch? That ain't got nothing to do with you. What do that got to do with the price of tea in China, Rolly? So then we jump back into the kitchen. And girl, they going back and forth. Girl, girl Scotty trying to throw items at Anna Mac and shit. Scotty going, oh, Scotty pop big in her chest up. I mean, Scotty really trying to have a moment. Like, she's trying to throw stuff at Anna Mac. And I'm like, Scotty, you should be mad at your pimp. Your pimp put you on front street for this. Like, your pimp put you on a street corner, bitch. But, like a hoe, you gotta, you gotta stay on that street corner. You gotta stand on that street corner and sell your body. You know? <laughs> like, Natalie really put you out there on front street. And you didn't you didn't even check Natalie. Like, you was going off on Anna Mac. Girl, she went and found a champagne glass trying to throw it at Anna Mac. Anna Mac threw a bag of food at Scotty. And I'm like, well, call Biggie and Rolly in here. Let them eat it off the floor. So, so they could just have a moment. So they could bond and shut up. Like... Call them to call them to in here and come eat that food off the floor. Anna Mac and Scotty, y'all, they just was going back and forth, and I just was over it. Like she got food in her hand, trying to feed Anna Mac like a dog, and Anna Mac was like, "Bitch, if anything, you the dog. You sit on that a little lap." And I'm like, "Clock that see. One thing Anna Mac gonna do is roast the piss out y'all. Like, Scotty, just shut up. You look stupid. Next, and y'all, this is the funniest shit in the whole episode to me. Biggie was like, um. Oh, like, I'm going to say it in Biggie voice. I'm trying to see what me you ain't wrong at because it was one point in time you said you want to see how I moan. You want to hear how I moan. Like, we was cool. We were smoking weed together. Then one day you say you want to see how I moan. You want to hear how I moan. I'm like, hear how the girl moan? Bitch, what? <laughs> when that girl said, Rolly wanted to know how Biggie sounded when she moaned, I was like, what? Bitch, What? That was going to be a sweaty ass sex scene. That was going to be some sweat going on in that room. Ooh, that would have been a sex scene for the century, y'all. And basically, long story short, they could not get on no type of common ground. Like, they just wasn't seeing it for each other. And Rolly just exited the conversation. And Biggie was like, you really mad because I'm the prettiest big bitch on Zeus Network. That's why you mad. That's why you really mad. And I'm like, you know what? I can kind of see it. I can actually kind of see it because... Rolly, you was here before Biggie. And I'm not gonna lie. Every time Biggie show up, Biggie serving looks. Biggie dressing. Biggie dressing to impress, bitch. But you know what it ate down even more? Like, the whole time, Rolly was like, you want to be a duo with me. And I'm like, oh, why couldn't she? Like, two big bitches running the, running the small holes? I would have I would have gagged. I would have I would have ate, I would have ate that up. I would have been so here for the two big girls being A's Boon Coons and just running shit in the house. I would have been here for it. But you know, I always felt like Rowley was insecure about Biggie because like Biggie is Biggie is the more petite version of Rowley. The more digestible version of Rowley. Like Rowley is the villain and Biggie is like the one everybody like. And we gotta have a villain, but you know, I just kind of feel like Rolly is insecure around Biggie. I'm sorry. That's just how I feel, you know. What do y'all think? And I was like, well, Biggie, I'm looking at you like you should never have been a Rolly ass in the first place because Rolly not a real friend of nobody except Natalie Nunn. Like, Biggie, you can't do shit for Rolly. So why are you up her ass? You was up her ass because she was a big girl. I understand it. You want to find some, you want to have a sister. A partner in crime, you know, somebody that, that can relate to you, but but Roland is not that kind of girl. But y'all, like, if they would have been a duo together, like, they would have ate, like, I really think they would have just ran the house and I would have been here for it. Like, who the fuck will stand up to those two big girls? But you don't want to fight them two big girls together, bitch, you will get demolished. 
I would have been here for it though. That would have been iconic. So at this point, Biggie is hollering, like, like trying to get her opinion across to everybody. And Camilla was like, she feel like Biggie need to shut the fuck up. And I'm like, Camilla, bitch, you don't say nothing to nobody. You don't say nothing in any episode. But when you do open your mouth, you say some stupid shit like that. That's what you say? That the girl in your house need to shut the fuck up? I feel like you should shut the fuck up and stay in the background. Because you're not giving us nothing. You're not giving us nothing. So how about you shut the fuck up? At least Biggie giving us something. At least she have a storyline. Camilla, why are you here? I'm looking my damn nerves. So Biggie started talking about Natalie and the PJ and all that. How Natalie make her feel less than. I'm like, Biggie, stay on topic, bitch. Because I wouldn't even told Natalie that. Like... You talking about some shit that's irrelevant at this point. I've been told you Natalie don't like you. Natalie don't feed for you because she got Roly. So why would she care how you really feel about the PJ? Like, you want to be accepted by Natalie. And Natalie just not seeing it for you, Biggie. Like, she made you a replacement. Like, you was a main cast member last season. Now, all of a sudden, you're a replacement, Biggie? That's because of Natalie. Natalie don't like you, Biggie. She don't like you. She don't see it for you. She act like she do, but she don't. So I was like, Biggie, you shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have said that at all. Then Roly. I never seen Roller run so damn fast a day in my life. She ran down that stairway and was like, but you ain't gonna never see a PJ. You ain't gonna never see a PJ. So Roller started laughing in Biggie's face, you know, joking in Biggie's face, and Sky decided to join in on the fun at Biggie's expense and join the joke with Roller. And I'm so glad, I'm so glad, I'm so glad Biggie actually addressed it. I'm so glad. Because Sky, that was up. That was fucked up. You laughing at me with my op. And I've been in the house with you, bitch, the whole time. But that's what you do to me? When you around Nelly Nunn and her, and her gang of hoes? Bitch, is you shitting me? Are you for real, Sky? I'm so glad Biggie clocked that T. I'm so glad Biggie said it. I'm so glad because, bitch... You think Natalie like you, Sky? Natalie don't like you, bitch. Black and crew on VH1 don't hold no type of weight over here on Zeus Network, Sky. They got, if Natalie had respect for you, Sky, Sky, you would have been around Natalie the whole time. You would have been on the PG. You would have got the Mariah Lynch treatment. You didn't get shit. Natalie paid you dust. Mariah Lynn and Sky and Suki was all on VH1 doing Love and Hip Hop and Black Ink. But guess what? Suki and Mariah Lynn got to be with Natalie. Sky D. So that should go to show you, Sky. You're not, bitch, you're not of value on this network. You're not, you're not worth nothing. And the fact that you tried to side with House 8 and laugh in this girl's face when this fucking girl be with you all day, every day, Biggie should have busted in your sheet. Biggie should have hit you dead in your mouth. Dead in your mouth. But guess what? I'm glad she stood on all 10 and I'm glad she said something. I'm glad she said something. And when she was trying to defend herself because what you did was fucked up, you want to take off your bag and put your phone down? Like, House B is a house of pathetic bitches. Like, House B is when it's sad. Like, before you, like before y'all fight for each other, y'all fight each other. You was quiet when that smiley shit went down. But when somebody tried to check you on something that you did well, that was messed up, you don't put your bag down and try to fight them. Like, Sky, what you did was messed up. That was fucked up. That was completely wrong what you did. But you want to try to fight this girl. And then E.T., extraterrestrial looking ass, will try to jump in the jump in the fight just because Biggie hollering. E.T., you wanted a moment so bad. You wanted a moment, you wanted a moment because Biggie and Roller was going back and forth. So you jumped in something that had nothing to do with you. And when you jumped in, Sky went back to the background. She went back in the background. And then E.T. go push, go push Biggie to sit her down. Biggie, you better than me, bitch. You better than me because I would have popped E.T. dead in her mouth. I'm sick. How is B not standing on shit? The only people I'm liking so far in this show is Biggie and Smiley. The rest of y'all are fake and phony ass people. And the rest of y'all are do girls that want to be down. And I kind of like Suki. Kind of sort of like Suki. I only see it for... Biggie, Smiley, and Suki thus far. The rest of y'all, y'all ain't shit. Y'all some do girls, and y'all some bitches that smile in my face all day, but when it's time to get in the paint, or I need some help with something, y'all standing back looking at me, laughing at me, and getting the confessional talking shit about me. But then we'll proceed to be in my face. This bitch won't be a blood so bad, red wig, red two-piece on, trying to jump in something that ain't got nothing to do with her. Biggie should have popped that blood vessel, should have popped our ass. 
pop this zit. This shit disgusting. House B don't stand on nothing. On no type of time, no type of business. Don't stand on nothing. But a fight one of their own right now. Well, fight their own sister right now. But when it come to them outsiders, they ain't gonna fight them outsiders. Mm. Remind you of a typical fucking family. But the man wants to talk about keep the peace. Bitch, please. So the next day comes. And Natalie calls Smiley. And we somehow again got back on this chain situation. So Smiley was asking Natalie, you know, where's her chain? And Natalie doesn't know where the chain is at. You know. So long story short, Mariah comes in looking like looking like a cougar on a whole stroll. Like the weakest cougar I ever seen with that sad ass leopard all into one on. Thought she was eating. Hell was stiff as hell. I never seen a braid that stayed up. Like good hair lay down. This damn braid was sticking up like sugar cane. Her braid was sticking on the top of her head. Mariah, Mariah Lynn, you in the wigs, girl. Go sit the fuck down. But long story short, Mariah Lynn jumped into the phone and was like, my sister has the chain. If you want the chain, get it back from her. Get it back from her. And then, before Mariah Lynn jumped into the scene, Natalie had already said they was going out and she thinks Mariah Lynn's sister is going to be there. So y'all keep in mind, Smiley knows that they're going out and there's a chance Mariah Lynn's sister is going to be at the club, right? So when they go out for the evening, Smiley got on like a little... Athletic two-piece, bitch. Smiley came and work a bitch out. And they all asking her why she got what she got on. Because Natalie already told her that her sister was going to be out there tonight. So why would she come in her nice good attire? Her nice good makeup? Her nice good hair? To get embarrassed on camera again? Like, y'all hoes phony. Then when the girl kept calling Natalie, when Smiley kept calling Natalie to, to check the temperature, see what it was giving, to see if the girl was there, Natalie's sitting there acting like she don't know why this girl calling her. Bitch, you called that girl earlier and gave the girl the heads up already. But when the girl calling you to check the temperature, you acting like you don't know why the girl calling? I'm just like, if you go do fuck shit, stay in any. Stay in any. Don't act like you don't know why I'm calling because you know why I'm calling. So stay in any. Y'all want everybody to stay in the shit they do, but y'all not staying in any. And it's pissing me off. And it make me want to drop this whole show completely because I'm sick of the bullshit. I'm sick of it. All right, y'all. I had kind of jumped ahead. So we go to house B, right? And T finally comes back into the house, y'all. We happy to see T. And T sits down and they download T on everything that happened from the night before. With the automatic versus Scotty, Biggie versus Roly. And they was like, they was basically trying to find out who was close with Smiley. So they could try to talk to Smiley or whatever. And they say, well, Tzatziki is close with Smiley. And Tzatziki was like, no, I'm not. Tzatziki, you a fake bitch. We always see you and Smiley together. The night, the night that you had fluid in your foot and you had to elevate your foot, that girl spent the night with you. Y'all always have solo scenes. So now when they ask you who's who, who's cool with that girl and they say you, and you say no, that's not true. I'm like, Ugh. it's like I can't I can't get house beat to stand on no type of business. I cannot get that out of them. Instead of them fighting the girls that obviously don't like them or see it for them, they're fighting amongst themselves. I was like, Tasiki, you fake as fuck. You fake and flow. You girl, you flawed as fuck for that. And side note with you, Smiley. Every time I see Smiley in this episode, bitch, you laughing and giggling and smiling with the bitches who stood by and let you get attacked. You sit with Camilla, giving out hugs and shit. Well, Camilla don't like you. Camilla getting a confession and saying she tired of you. But she gonna smile in your face. Girl, this whole episode, my this whole episode is just making my nerves bad because. Instead of them all being grown and voicing their concerns and saying what's really on their heart, they get in a confessional and see. But when we amongst each other talking face to face, but just acting like we all cool. But in that same breast smiling like you did that fuck shit, like you did that. So if they can't have your back, I can't really be too mad if they don't have your back because you did the shit, you did it. So staying in it. But at the same time though, if y'all say y'all my friend, y'all saying we cool or whatever, and something go down, and I'm getting jumped, and y'all not doing nothing, but sitting there watching. I just want all of them to go home. Long story short, I want all of them to go home. I want Smiley to go, Camilla can go, Sky can go, and Tzatziki at this point, you and Anna can go, cause y'all not giving y'all not giving me nothing. Girl, they pissed me off this episode so bad, y'all. So once again, Camilla dumbass see she felt like Biggie came at Sky wrong. And I'm like, how? How did Biggie go at Sky wrong when Sky got in some shit that had nothing to do with her with my op? 
if my op is laughing in my face, joking on me, and somebody I'm cool with all the time, who I live with, go out with, stands with the bitch and laugh in my face at me, trying to be funny, and I felt the way so I spoke on it, how, did that, how is that going in her room? That's what Biggie was supposed to do. Biggie standing on business. That was, that was, that's what a bad bitch do. Camilla, you, oh, Camilla. When you said that, you became, you, you, you got on my shit list when you said that. When you said that dumb ass shit, you felt like Sky, you felt like Biggie went at Sky wrong. Oh, girl. Oh, girl, pay you. Girl, pay you. Once again, not giving a shit in the episode, but when she do open her mouth, say the stupidest things. But what, 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 what do y'all think? What do y'all think? Do y'all feel like Biggie went at Sky wrong? Or y'all feel like Biggie was justified in what she did? But then Smiley feels like she's an enemy in her own house. And I'm like, yeah, Smiley. Yeah, like, it's definitely time for you to exit at this point. Like, they all sick of you. Like, if you can't feel that energy coming off them in the scene when y'all filming, then there's something wrong with you. If like you won't clout that bad. But they're not seen it for you, Smiley. They're not seen it for you. And little do you know... And little do you know, now they're trying to set you up at the club. She really trying to set you up. They put you on game already. Well, they dumb asses like, how? Hold on. Let's not clock this. How when I call y'all earlier, Mariah, you jump in the phone and say, you gonna see my sister soon. And like I told y'all, she had called Natalie multiple times trying to check the temperature and Natalie was playing in our face. So at this point, y'all, I'm fast forwarding all that all that extra shit, you know, them going out to the the Baddest Blunt event, you know, although that was nice, I like that for the show, Baddest Blunt, that's a nice little, you know, thing for them, we're going to hit, the, we're going to go to the club. And y'all, side note, every time Natalie get on the mic, that bitch trying to sound hood, she keeps trying to sound like she from the ghetto, like she hood or something, y'all know what the fuck it is, like Natalie, if you don't shut your, if you don't shut your butter knife chin ass up, like every time she get on the mic, she, y'all know what the fuck it is, man, y'all know what it is. Y'all know, like, now, like, no, we don't know what it is, baby. You trying, you trying your best. You trying your damnest to be hood right now, baby. It's not working. It's not working. Please shut up and go shave your chin. Go sit down. All right, so we finally get to the club, y'all. And then Natalie gets on the mic and say, Mariah, what we doing? Because anybody can get touched in here tonight. So that's cold for Mariah Lynn to go and get her sister and bring her sisters to the section. So... While they're on the way back to the section, Smiley sees the sister coming. So Smiley gets down and swings at the sister. And her and the sister started fighting. Mariah Lynn was nowhere to be found when her sister was getting her ass whooped, looked like. They really was pulling hell. And that was the episode, y'all. That was the episode. Mariah Lynn had a whole family in the club for a chain. On the next episode, it seems like Smiley threatened Mariah Lynn's whole family. Y'all know, y'all know Smiley works in the black market, so. Not Mariah Lynn feeling a certain type of way. Well, bitch, you should never bought your family then. All in all, y'all, I'm so sick of House B. I feel like lately I've been roasting House B more than House A. Because House B is on fuck shit. They're not trying to do no sisterhood for real. Like, y'all bitches just fake and phony. Not standing on business, trying to fight each other. Making my skin crawl. And the oldest ones in House B, Sky, Camilla, and Tzatziki, the oldest ones, it's the ones that's doing all the fuck shit. But you guys, that is all for this Baddies East review, you guys. I hope you guys like what I gave. I hope I didn't skip anything. If there's anything I missed, get in the comments down below. And that's all I gotta say, y'all. Be sure to like. Be sure to comment. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Click that bell to be notified of all my latest updates. And I'll see y'all in the next review. Bye.